right, welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you again for joining us today. And, um, sorry for the hiccups there in the, in the Twitch stream, but, um, but we're back live now. A quick announcement that I want to give is uh, it's a giveaway, actually the second giveaway of today. And then during the course of this presentation, we're going to do a third one. So um, you have the chance to win an OSCP course, and the link is in the bottom of the screen. And with that, I'll pass it out to you guys. <laughs> awesome, thanks. Hi, yeah, guys. hello everybody and welcome. Uh, today we're gonna be building uh, a couple keyboards from uh, the key company. They sent us these uh, pretty awesome terminal green portico kits that we're gonna put together today. Um, yeah, so I guess full disclosure, they they sent us all of this stuff um, to, to give away to everybody today and send out, so we're gonna be doing that. Um, also, uh, look for a link at some point. Um, when we do give these away, it should be a Google form coming out that you guys can can jump in on. Um, so yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, how you doing, Lang? Man, I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Can't complain. Can't complain. Nice good to, to see, see you again. You. It's been a minute. I know, right? I've I've got all of our 808 stuff set up here, you know, with my fun board and and desk mat. So yeah, yeah, uh, I love which it. obviously we'll talk about later, but. Yeah, you know, yeah. Good. No, no subtle shill for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, no subtle. Look, you know. No, it's helping kids though, man. It, it all goes you know? to a charity. Like I can show when it's when it has to deal with kids. Listen, seven thousand dollars that goes to a charity that has yeah. a budget of forty is like a huge contribution. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not upset about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we can get into that later. So, uh, did you wind up doing any mods to your stuff today? I did. Yeah, so uh, I did some switch mods, and then I actually opened this up not too long ago for the first time, and found like some pretty cool extras in here, like this, like neoprene, like yeah, so case filler that they're on I, now. I, I think it's actually pretty great. So, um, so a couple of things. Um, you know, I'm certain that anyone watching the stream that you know you're using your keyboard a ton of the time, right? You know, I I hope. I hope for your sake it's not like that run-of-the-mill like Dell or HP thing that you get with your company issued uh, computer. Um, but that said, a lot you know I I know that a fair amount of folks either have maybe like an Ergo Docs or have bought an aftermarket mechanical keyboard. Um, but it can get kind of difficult to get there. So so there's this huge like subculture of mechanical keyboard obsession uh, that that Andy has been a part of and I still am very active in. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about today. So, so this kit, um, is, is, is a 65% keyboard. So, um, to give you an example, you know, that's a smaller form factor. It's got all of your main alpha keys and, and arrows as well. So, right. Like that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. So I have several, uh, software engineer friends who are big into the 65 realm because they still get their arrows. Um, and that's what we're going to build today so i i absolutely tangent full on that so i'm sorry andy about that but um no absolutely do you want to walk them through like all the parts and stuff since you've got the setup going on i'm just adding some stabs right now yeah to the yeah, yeah man so 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 um a couple of things so your your mechanical keyboards are going to come with a few di different things uh there is a very uh, uh lively debate about what makes a thing mechanical in in the community uh so i will keep it very simple and will not go like super into that. Um, but you have different parts, right? You've got your keycaps, which this comes with keycaps. This kit comes with them and they are the terminal colored, you know, with your black background and your and your green text with green accents. Um, and then you've got your case, right? You've got your whole keyboard that comes together. And I've, I've intentionally pulled it apart because I have to build some things, but um, you've got your plates and you've got your PCB, your programmable circuit board. And to your point, uh, Andy, you know, you've got this interesting kind of neoprene bottom here. Not only does this add weight to the case because it is, you know, an injection molded plastic to keep cost down, but also these kind of hex shapes help with sound distribution and also dampening so that you don't in, in 2050, when we finally go back to an in-office uh, situation, um, you know, you're not annoying everyone around you. So, um, <laughs> And then, and then uh, other other big notable parts of the keyboard, which this case, uh, this this whole package also comes with a cable. So it's a nice like coiled kind of vintage style cable. Uh, it's USB C, so you know it's it's not 1997 anymore. So we've got USB A to USB C. And then um, the one thing that is not included in the kit, as far as I'm aware, is 
are, are switches. So mechanical keyboards come with discrete individual switches, right? So so instead of a typical membrane keyboard where you're depressing a, a piece of rubber that's that's closing the circuit, you have individual discrete switches. Um, and that's we're gonna we're gonna put some of those in today. And we've got the the terminal themed colorway for those as well. So I'm doing I'm doing my best to not like full on shill for the key company. I'm 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 doing my best to educate you as well. Um, there are other parts inside of of your keyboards, and, and if you're if you're using a mechanical keyboard or even even if you're using like a membrane keyboard, the four dollar one that came with your setup, you know, it's it's got all of these same things. It's got your programmable circuit board, individual discrete switches, and also stabilizers for your larger keys. So you've got your enter, we've got a full backspace here, which I personally hate. We can talk about that if you like, and then shift keys. And I left spacebar undone so that I could if anyone is interested in building their own or getting into there, I could at least show you how relatively easy it is to do that. So those are the main parts of your, your keyboard that we're talking about. Also a lovely thing for those of you that travel and still need something that doesn't, that isn't a, a, um, an HP laptop keyboard. Uh, it does come with this, this, this travel case as well. So that's, that's something that's nice too. Um, but remember, it's not it's not limited to just this one thing, right? There are there is a massive thriving business around custom keyboards in this hobby, and you know all different kinds of form factors. I showed you sixty five percent. This right here is like an ergonomic forty percent. So it's removed the number row. There's no F row. Apparently, my camera thinks that that is a face, so that's cool. Um, we have like full ergonomic with with the with the number row, but no F keys. Right. Um, we have, I'm sorry, and I'm just using my own personal boards now. So we've got uh, a traditional 60% with arrows and a numpad if you need that, if you're in Excel. We've got the sexy 60%. Everybody loves that. We got some Hebrew here. And then uh, a personal favorite of mine because it's a set I designed. We've got a TKL. This is every gamer's friend, a TKL. We've got some artisans here. You know, we're doing that. So. Lots of different options. Andy, I've talked for six minutes, I think. What thoughts or comments or th <laughs> things do you have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that definitely explains the gamut of, of, of a quick customization uh, examples that you can do. Maybe maybe it's good to start with uh, why. Why bother? And like where, oh, where, where, did, where did custom keyboards come from into like a, a multi-vendor, um, hype beast driven, like, cloud like desk want the tldr cloud, you know? or or nerd response which one would you prefer well, i mean you know it's like we got defcon people watching you might as well get into okay. the details okay so 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 there is there is this situation that has happened uh with mechanical keyboards specifically where you hearken back specifically to vintage keyboards right um if you're if you're someone who's been in the game for a while or you grew up as a gen xer or a millennial and, and the internet was either blossoming around you or computers became more and more accessible for you. Um, at the time, you had these incredible keyboards at your disposal. You had IBM Beamspring computers if you're on the earlier end of Gen X. You had all of your Model M, like all of your buckling spring, that, that really mm -hmm. satisfying like typing feeling and sound that just kind of was ubiquitous for your experience associated with a computer, right? Mm -hmm. So then we came of age and we got to our office setting and they said, here is an HP rubber dome that sounds and feels like you're typing on rotten, over soggy rice. So enjoy your work experience now. But we, we took typing classes and all through our lives, we use these great keyboards. So that's kind of where the genesis of like, being obsessed with with like wanting a better keyboard came from mm -hmm. um and and so it really was an, until about like 2016 2017 was like a super niche hobby um but then uh gamers kind of picked up on it right because because you could customize weights of springs for individual switches and really kind of get into that. So then it was like, oh, okay, I like a lighter switch because that actuates better. That makes me a better gamer. I'm going to put quotes around that because it's ridiculous. Um, but anyways. Well, you once, had the whole like, you know, the HHKB, the duck saver, like well, the whole Korean market too. Like. Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously like outside of the US, like yeah. you have a massive, massive market associated with keyboards, like 
Korean <laughs> customs especially are super important and super super desired because their attention and focus early on in the career really really made part of what the community is what it is now mm -hmm. um and and i mean there's there's over a billion people in china and many 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 people in you know metro china use some form of of keyboard mm -hmm. right so uh there's there's a big 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 market there so much so that you know we're getting requests for adding more chinese vendors for certain things because you know there um, almost aren't enough right well yeah that that's a good place to take this conversation next right so like now that we kind of know you know it, what where it came from and kind of why all of this rampant customization for you know i mean even in the last year right like getting getting matching colored stabilizers like these green things we're putting on these pcbs right now and like you know every switch color under the sun was not a thing and many people think that you know mx mx style switches are just like that like that is a keyboard switch right but but like a lot of this started from uh people doing google form group buys where they say like hey i've got a I've got a keyboard dream. I want this form factor, this size, or I want I want this thing. Um, and and much like a Kickstarter per se, they go through and they're like, okay, well, uh, I need to find enough people that I can split the cost of manufacturing to a point where it where it's not massively expensive, right? And and from there, you had a couple uh, internet vendors, like online stores, if you will, pick that up and say, hey. Uh, we can we can kind of officiate this and, and we can we can do this in a manner where it's not you know paypal goods and services to make sure you can file a complaint if you never get what you bought and like you know that was like you know your, your novel keys and your dixie mech which is now omni type rebranded um and then from there like there, there was really i want to say in the last five years specifically just an absolute explosion of options and vendors and you know community members coming together like you know for those of you if i've got like my keyboard folks in chat right now like you guys remember boxgate and like you know where box switches were cracking everybody's stems and someone in the community is like yo i uh i mean i, I 3d model like i can design something and like i think within a month they had like a metal like this metal yeah thing the right stem shaver yeah, yeah i remember that, that. Yeah. everybody's stems like but but like the communities like that just on steroids about everything and you know that harkens back to like the plank, right? And, and you know, the, the, the roots there and QMK. I got and, one back there. Yeah, like, you know, you go from the plank and Jack Jack Humber, who, who, you know, did QMK and uh, really set a standard for the community as far as firmware. And and it, it kind of just took off from there where people just couldn't get enough. I mean, to the point now where if you join an officiated group buying on someplace like Canon Keys or the key company or, or you know, wherever, granted, the key company, um, um, I don't think runs GMK sets very often, but yeah, the they don't. Is, they don't like GMK is back up for like a year, like a year for production times. Yeah, like that's how popular it's gotten, which is just crazy. It's <laughs> how to how to how to how to uh, wade into that water. Um, yeah, the the one thing I think the main takeaway from all of the insanity that we're kind of breezing over right now is that. There are many, many, I mean, I mean, well over a million people that are weirdly obsessed with keyboards. And it's not just from like an aesthetic thing, although, you know, some folks are very focused solely on aesthetics. It's really a, I have this tool I use every day. I would like to be able to customize it in the most efficient or, or lovely way for me possible, right? Um, and that's kind of where it has blossomed. There is a very high preponderance of software engineers that are in the custom keyboard hobby. I myself am a professional learning. I'm an instructional designer. Um, so I'm typing a lot of copy and, and scripting a lot of the day. So I think it's folks that are using that tool frequently. Um, but the, the reason that I say that is like this, we are talking about this right now in the event that you have a disposable income that you want to do something like this, right? Like here are the parts of a keyboard at a high level. You can have basically anything you ever want. And if it doesn't already exist, the community is probably trying to do that. Like, you know, it's like yeah. steno, custom steno keyboards. Yep, like that's a thing, you know, uh, if you wanna type super fast, if you, you know, you've got your HHKB uh, blocks. I specifically didn't show off my HHKB because I hate it personally. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not a, I know you're not a Toper fan. Uh, I know you don't like rubber domes. I know that's not your thing. Uh, that said, it is an exceptionally favorite keyboard of the community. So yeah. like, my, 
that's what the hobby is like all about is about preference right like right now i'm lubing stabilizers to make sure they don't sound a certain way which most of the community does um but i'm using lube that almost no one does uh, also i think that we should mention for those that aren't knowledgeable about custom keyboards when we talk when we say things like qmk we're talking about the protocol for which we're we're programming the the pcbs right the programmable circuit boards um when i say lube i don't mean special time i mean a lubricant for uh, mechanical parts inside of our keyboards um yeah so <laughs> it's it's important i think that i make those distinctions um because yeah, I mean, this, this is probably weird. a good time to kind of transition into like, <laughs> what 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 is the process? Like, what are these parts we're using? What is the process for building these boards? And like, why like why is there modding? Why don't they? Why doesn't it just come sold that way? And like, you know, um, and, I, and I think a good start to that is is to say, you know, uh, a, a lot of what we're building right now um, is, is kind of standing on the shoulders of giants. In that you have a kit that normally, uh, when you get a group buy and you buy a board, it shows up with um, a kit that contains um, a range of, of, of extra parts, but normally at minimum, um, a PCB, um, such as the one you see that I'm holding now, um, a case for that to go into, and then um, a plate. Um, these can be all kinds of different styles. They could be integrated into the top of the case. Um, they can be some, some sort of um, what's called top mount system, wherein the PCB um, accepts the MX switches or the op switches, if that's what you're using, through the plate, and then is secured to the bottom of the case through screws that screw through um, both of these pieces. And then as of recent, we talked about uh, in the last five years, there's been like a, like a rampant explosion of, of all kinds of just different preference-driven things for more more flex feel or a firmer feel or like a sound profile. And out of, out of that want for extreme niche personalization has come a lot of these components that you're seeing now, you know, that have like um, these sandwich mount types or some have gasket mounts or some are, are a hybrid mounting style. Or um, full isolation or yeah. burger or like, I don't, I don't know the difference anymore. Like the, the, I live the, and breathe the, the hobby and I can't keep up. Like, yeah. I mean, the memes luck. abound really like in, in terms of, <laughs> In terms of all of that, and and on top of that, um, it seems like everyone is opening a store to sell switches and uh, switch openers and like lubrication stands and like like th there's some oddly feverishly hot want to come out with like the next you know the next thing in the community um, off of what just came out. You um, you accidentally gave me such a good segue into a conversation that happens in the community very frequently, especially as a professional learning person myself, uh, there is an extremely steep curve that is getting into the hobby outside of just like buying a, a, a relatively very easy kit like this. This is hot swap. So you just push your switches that you've chosen in there. You don't have to lube your switches. All of this is super easy. But the second that you start having a conversation about like plate materials is, or do you prefer brass or FR4 or a or stacked mm -hmm. acrylic? Like all of this stuff, then it, it, it goes from zero to a billion very quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, that in store, uh, you know, again, shill shill company. Uh, they have they have kind of an introduction to keyboards 101. Um, if you're interested in that kind of a resource, also many folks just kind of learned through Discord or the RMK or excuse me, yeah. Reddit R slash Mechanical Keyboards forum. Um, you know, there's there's no right or wrong way to do things. Uh, asking questions and watching streams is typically the best. Um, but yeah, I just. If, if you have time or are looking for a hobby or want to customize your typing experience, not only can you do all of that yourself, there are many, many nerds such as myself that will help you in that journey and would love to do that. So if, if this is something that you're like, golly, geez, I sure do want to do that. It's, you know, you don't have to do it alone or, or, or just you, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've built many a board for people who are, you know, in one of the social areas and like, yeah, I, you know, don't know if I want hot swap or not, but I also don't want to solder anything. And I'm like, well, don't let that stop you. Like, I'll like send it to me. I'll just build it and send it back to you. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Um, man. Yeah. And it's, it's also uh, kind of, kind of, it depends on what kind of boards you get, right? So like the boards we're building today 
um, have hot swap components, which means on the bottom of this PCB, they've got these um, kale style Here, acceptors. I can, I that can will, zoom in on mine. Uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll they'll take the the pins that you have on um, those keyboard switches, right, and they'll complete the circuit on the PCB. Um, and another way to do that is is to just literally solder them on a PCB that you um, get with a kit that does not have hot swap sockets. And a third option for that is what's called Milmax sockets. Um, and those are basically like metal sleeved housings that go into um, these pin receptors. Are you right over there, man? Yeah, I, I, sorry, you said Milmax and I had a little bit of a reaction. I'm sorry, I just. You don't like Milmax? Uh, so, so my problem with Milmax is that unless you are good at soldering already, Milmax will make your life horrifyingly terrible. Like yeah, you're gonna have a couple bad, a couple of bad joints. Like to figure like we'll, out. We'll do we'll do it in the in. I'll try and put it on my camera. So like uh, at the bottom, you have hot swap, super easy. And then like slightly above that soldering, like the the electrical requirements for soldering a keyboard are exceptionally uh, resilient and very forgiving. And then right up here at the very top of the hellscape that is keyboard world is mill maxing a keyboard to make it hot swap. So as a beginner, I don't recommend them. And although yeah. I know you were just saying that's an option, I felt like I had a duty to inform everyone that golly geez, I don't recommend that. Uh, sure. <laughs> not so off like, the gate. So like, yeah, so like back to preference, back to preference, right? That's the thing that I prefer because yes. uh, I can solder once and if I ever have to take apart this board for any reason, like my joints are already done and I'm not, redoing that work all of the time um Preference. and risking damage i've got a desolder station and i'm happy to solder all day so like me i don't care about hot swap like at all but i also stream every week of my life so yeah you know it's different different expectations i have i showed you what seven boards and they're all my personal boards and there's another six or seven just right there and that's before we talk vintage like there's different levels of the community, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so so up to this point, basically, uh, I know Lang looks like he's uh, pretty close in tow. What I have at this point is uh, the stabilizers installed, and these are these are what are, are going to allow for like the actuation of your your larger keys in a, in a manner that keeps them on this switch, right? Otherwise you would depress this key and like your, your space bar has a like pretty much a 50, 50 shot of just shooting right off this, right off this switch that would be here. Um, and normally people use these for anything that is to you or larger. That is to say that any one switch position on these PCBs is one unit uh, in size and any keys that are outside of that single one, um, either alpha, alphanumeric or, or number keys that you're used to um, are, are some number of units larger than one. Um, yeah, so the two U keys that you're gonna see on a traditional keyboard are your backspace, your enter, both shifts are larger than two U, your space bar, and if you have a numpad, your zero key is usually, mm -hmm. or your enter and plus. It depends on what layout you've got there, but um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Andy, I will I will caution you to not forget your little standoffs that go on the PCB because this is hot swap that yep. securely anchors your plate to the PCB. This is a rare option that comes with this stuff. So because there's no solder that's literally connecting the two, we've got screws that are going to hold these two pieces together. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so, so normally when we were going to put these together, if it wasn't going to be hot swap white, right, what we would be doing um, would be on the back of these PCBs, um, right, we would be purposefully positioning these um, with the switches loaded into the plate and um, depressing down when we're trying to solder to make sure there is absolutely no gap between any of these components because the one thing that we don't want uh, is rattle, whether that's stab rattle or that's like, you know, any any kind of uh, switch ping or 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 sound notes that we don't want. Yeah, do um, me do me a favor if you if you're watching this, and you have an like like one of those traditional I got it when I joined the company, plastic keyboards that they left on your desk, and you know you're just using it because it's not a thing that care that you care about. Just go ahead and tap on that spacebar a couple of times, and 
And when the 80 decibels of rattle happens, that's what we're trying to avoid with all of this. Yeah. So, and that, yeah, and that's really why, like, uh, typically with these stabilizers, um, uh, up until very recently, these bottom feet would cause um, some issues that you would have with that set, very sound we're talking about. So you you would have to go in and clip these, and people would say, you know, well, oh, well, why don't they just make them so you don't have to do that anymore? That's what everyone wants to buy, and they are getting to that point. But for a long time, it was just because you know they have those molds, and you can just clip them. So that's what people would do. They would clip them, and then um, they would put. Uh, they like insert grease of your choice, whether that's, you know, GPL 105 or 205 or Crytox or, you know, whatever that is into here. Um, and, and it helps. It, it, it's debated whether or not, you know, based on preference, you want to lube your stabs, but it's, it's a pretty common. Um, I, it, I, it's, it's I common don't deal. know many, many hobbyists that are like, gosh, lubing your stabs is dumb like it's it's super yeah. rare it's super rare to have most will tell you don't use band-aids because your your yeah your keyboard isn't hurt like don't oh, use band-aids oh. uh also extremely diy to the point that there for many many years was the band-aid mod where it's if you want it to not sound bad you cut band-aids to put on the pcb so where yeah. the stabilizer hits it doesn't doesn't make a an undesirable sound. I'll use that word. Yeah, grease undesirable. Trampolines. <laughs> grease trampolines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and another, another modification that um, we we've done. Um, I assume you have. Uh, I have. Is I've put different kinds of greases on these switches, uh, and this is what a switch will look like when you've disassembled it, right? Um, and you use one of these okay. switch openers to then open the switch, which consists of a leaf spring, a an actual spring, uh, which causes the stem to um, actuate up and down, the stem itself, which is this gray part, um, and then the top and bottom plastic housing. And these have uh, little pins in them. And, and that's the, that is the positive and negative contact for the leaf spring, uh, which is shaped something like a P, right? And then when the stem of this switch, um, which I, I, I believe that uh, there, there should be a guide um, that's getting linked that'll have better pictures of this and walk you through all this that you can use later. Um, but it'll, it'll show you exactly what the difference is between linear switches and clicky switches and um, tactile switches, right? And it's the shape of this little bitty stem um, on, the side of, on the side of this plastic piece. And whether or not that is shaped um, like a lightning bolt or a straight linear curve, um, right, and the degree of that shape is what's going to affect um, the feel of that switch. Um, I've and been so in this hobby use... for five years, and no one has ever described a tactile force curve as a lightning bolt until now. And my brain hurts with how accurate that is. <laughs> like, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, and you know, and there's and there's like there's very hotly debated like what you use on these switches, right? So like for me, um, my my spice every time is 105 on the springs and 205 on the stems. I'm not asking questions. Yeah, I'm not see, doing anything else. Now see, I'm, I'm, I'm a heavy girl. I'm a heavy girl. I put yeah. heavy lube on them springs. Like give me a 205 on the springs. <laughs> give me a 205 on the on on, on everything else because yeah. I use linear. So like I want smooth as butter, but <laughs> not so much that it slows the spring down, which this is this right here. And this this is a shocker for a lot of people. This keyboard right here is my daily driver. I use this every day I work. I use this at least five days a week. And in it, I have linear springs, not a surprise. But the weight on the linear springs is 150 grams. And that's my daily driver. That's how I type. Now, yeah. your traditional gaming keyboards that you get that has like cherry, cherry reds or whatever, that's 55 grams. So almost triple the weight because... Like why? Why yeah. else would I not type on on that? You know, like we yeah. we've got them swole fingers, right? Like the only yeah. strong thing in my life is my fingers. Yeah, and and so, and if as if we haven't delved into the the plethora of options and you know this the seascape <laughs> of things that you could customize add ad infinitum, right? Uh, switches. Oh my God! Like you can change the spring the spring curve like curve type you can change the weight my friend ben owns more than a thousand variations of switches yeah in his collection um yeah. here's frankensteining switches different oh, parts from different switches pieces. my goodness my goodness um i th i think it's very important that we mention although we sit here and we are like 
dousing the world with knowledge about keyboards we are nearly complete building a keyboard like that like it is much easier than it sounds so like if your keyboard is not quite there or you bought a custom and you're like eh, i wish it did this instead like all of these things are possible and that's not a sales pitch for any specific company yeah that is just if you're not pleased with the thing you use all the time, especially if you're a gamer and also using it for work, uh, highly recommend that this is something if you have disposable income that you get into. Also, yeah, and I mean, if you don't, you can take any board you have now and apply some of the things we've been talking about, like yep. the, the greases and lubes and modifications and lining your board with sorbethane or drawer liner or, you know, any any number of modifications and see so, if this is even something that you enjoy or, or quite frankly notice so for like, those you of you who difference. have for those of you that have purchased an hhkb right because you're hackers right like it's i feel like it's a requirement to own the thing that says hacking in the name okay if you take this apart and you fill it you know you know that like i think they call it like magic stuff or the magic foam that you spray into yeah. the crack and it expands if you spray that in the back of this case it no longer is like this hollow terribleness. It it all of a sudden becomes a better keyboard to use and adds some weight and like structure. Yeah. So, for the cost of I think eight dollars from a from a hardware store, you could make your two hundred and fifty dollar keyboard better already. And what an exceptional segue to talk about why why uh, people only seem to buy and sell metal boards <laughs> with with big brass weights that you can't that are engraved and that you can't see with big brass weights um hold on a second I have everyone a loves putting logos on you know on the bottom of the board with 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 the weights and it's all about that heft and that and that uh premium that premium feeling with big brass weights well sometimes it's not about the weight sometimes oh, it's boy. about the board that you wanted oh my god my headphones right now sometimes a it's gorgeous about the time you TKL. You first joins uh the hobby and you know maybe maybe the thing you want has a literal clock on the back you know because you know, why not um <laughs> and even though the board sits like this and i never see it <laughs> i wanted it because reasons right well that's the same reason people you know like we we have these uh kiwi switches that they that they sent us to obviously aesthetically match the board and the same for um, these green C3 equal stabilizers that I'm they sent to match, to match this, right? Them. Like no one's gonna, no one's probably gonna see the switches or the stabs, but like, like I know, <laughs> like we we know it's there, and and you know there are certain things too, uh, such as like co conventions for mechanical keyboards, just like Keycon, you know, and and people go to those specifically to flex. Like it's Girl, I got one in September. You know, it's it's like a car meet of keyboards. People just show up, they pop the trunk, and you know, pop the hood, and let everybody uh know what they've been working on. And My favorite thing to see at a keyboard meetup is this, where someone's like really close in there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, room like five hundred <laughs> like, people. It's like when a dude starts a car at a car meetup. They're like, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's 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 what it's right. Like the the search for the the like what is it uh. Odyssean, like the the in game, just the perpetual ball up the hill. No, that's Sisyphus. This something the Sisyphean. Right? Yeah, Sisyphean. Yeah, that's, that's the Sisyphean <laughs> task is trying to find in game. You know, that that holy grail, perfect combination of things. I have I've alert. decided long ago, end game does exist, but I choose to ignore <laughs> that I own end game already because I just like keyboards and want to continue the struggle. Yeah. I've decided that my perfect combination already exists. And it's this keyboard here. It's this keyboard right here, okay? I I love this. I literally ruined it. I, I, I patinaed the copper on this to be blue. Because why not? It's, it's, it's heavy. It's 11 pounds of a keyboard. Because why would I not want that? And keycaps fall off. It has a palm plastic plate with with very specific key switches in it and, and Arabic uh, language keycaps on it because I don't speak Arabic, but it's beautiful to me. Um, mm -hmm. And that exists as my end game. And you know what I'm gonna do with it? I'm either gonna continue to ruin it by continuing to mess with the weight or I'm gonna auction it for a charity at Christmas time this year and I'm gonna get rid of it. Like, 
I hope somebody buys it for five thousand dollars because that is absolutely in the realm of the cost of someone would pay for these keyboards. You could buy this kit that we're building right now for one hundred and thirty-five dollars shipped, and then buy switches and have a keyboard. Or you could be an aftermarket whale that wants the one of one thing that exists and spend five grand on the thing. And that is the gamut of the hobby at this point. Yeah, and that's a perfect time to talk about like, okay, uh, most people enter the hobby through like, they want something that's easier to type on or they want something that's more attractive and they search like- Or it goes click, click, click. That's why yeah. I joined. Yeah, you know, they, they search custom keyboards, they find the subreddit, you know, and then they figure out that everyone who's selling literally anything related now has a Discord. They join those. Um, you know, Mechs on Deck and Top Clack are great ones if you're Googling along at home. I highly suggest those as starter communities. I um, also have a plug for my very good friend, Keeb Noob, N E W B. She is yes. fantastic and and very welcoming so um i also have a discord but my discord exists solely for people to ask when cafe is happening again so like you don't need to join mine like it's fine cafe cafe is a meme it's only brown olivia it's only brown olivia that's like that's another thing it's just the hobby is so big now that i've never seen a community exist. more like just detail oriented about yes. stuff that just doesn't matter sometimes like pulling out calipers to test literal literal micro millimeter differences in things and then you know this isn't what i this isn't what i paid for this isn't what i got but that's patrick, what really doing people patrick being like has a consulting business to match colors of keycaps like that is he he scientifically matches keycaps so that the end product is exactly what was represented yeah correctly like like that's we are a community of nerdy nerds like <laughs> it's it's not even funny yeah yeah it's uh yeah it, it, it you know and everyone gets bit too right like it's always i do i do my first one and then it's like you know oh i want to you know i, I want to get one like this or like now now i kind of want one that has like all of these functions and and then pretty soon before you know it you know, you've got you've got the Pelican case with the pick and pull foam <laughs> at the bottom on your way to Keycon, you know, and you're you're yeah. you're you're, yeah. you're you're painfully connected to whatever alert system you're using to let you know that you know the the key cult raffle is happening in 37 minutes, which only Girl, stays open real for nine talk, seconds. Real talk. Um the one thing, and if anyone out there is like me and is very big into reality shows, I I look, I live a good life. I feel like I'm a good husband. I love my children. I feel like I'm a good dad. My guilty pleasure is terrible reality shows because they make me feel better about who I am as a person. Okay. So the one thing that the keyboard hobby has that I highly recommend to you is if you like drama, girl, we got it. Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah. Holy hell. It is chock full of who did this and what happened. And if you want to be a part of it, you can be. If you don't want to hear it, you absolutely can avoid it. But I have entire Discord channels devoted to just specific humans that cause drama. Like, it's, I am not kidding. It's it's pretty much like just, you know, well, sitting on the Vegas Strip and at midnight and just... Oh, the people watching... Watching it hit the, the fan. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Right, Nito so I, alone I, is like just years of drama in a human, and I love it so much. Yeah, it, yeah, just, just, just wild. Um, so at this point, I've got the switches inside of the um, case and PCB, and everything is connected and set up. Um, and then I've installed that into uh, the case, which was a two-part case with the screws on the bottom, uh, and and uh, this specific kit. Uh, I, I didn't get to see, do you know what plastic type this is? I, I don't think uh, so are, but... this, as far as what exact plastic type it is, I am not sure. I believe that it's PPS okay. um, based solely on the cost effectiveness of PPS and injection molding. Yeah, um, I have stats on like everything but plastic type. I this. could um, be wrong though. Yeah. So do not quote me on that. I do not know. I am a dumb. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, uh -oh. Oh, thank you for agreeing that I am a dumb. I best friends here appreciate that. No, no, I just agreed that, <laughs> that you didn't have the answer, and that's okay. You know, I'm 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 here for you. You know what? F you too, man. I don't know if I'm supposed to swear, so I've been censoring myself. So uh, yeah, 
Because um, <laughs> boy, howdy do, I swear. But yeah. today I've chosen not to. You're welcome, Omar. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to put this together. Uh, also, I've been trying to time it to the full hour. So I know that you're ahead of me, but I still have 13 minutes to screw this together and put keycaps on. So, you know, I feel like one of us is winning, even though we're behind. So Yeah, yeah. And we have the giveaway to, the giveaway for both of these to go. Giveaway? Did two. you say singular? Giveaways. Because I'm giving away. this one away, too. Yeah. Built by a pro streamer. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. I have like 11 people that watch my stream once a week, and so I believe that I'm a pro streamer, when that's a lie. But I do build boards pretty nicely, so if you ever need one help, like, I don't charge to build stuff. If you ever want me to put this all together and you're like, golly geez, that's too much to learn, you just send it to me. I put my at as my name. I On all socials, that's where I'm at. Twitch, the Instas, those are really the two I use. Uh, Discord a lot. Hey, when you put caps on, do you still like say every single key when you go across the road and make sure you put it in the right place? Um, I don't know how many boards I've built. You would think I have this thing memorized and I just don't. I've been streaming for like 14 months now and I've probably built 200 boards in my life um, on and off stream. And I still pull up my key tester to know exactly where every key is. <laughs> so I don't say them. I just cheat constantly because... Um, I'm a terrible human. Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to refute that ever. Yeah, I absolutely just, you know, A S D O G H J. Got it. <laughs> like, you know. All right, we are nearly finished here. Yeah, what what uh what 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 do we what do we miss so far? I know we had an agenda worked up to kind of walk people through. You know, I had put... it pulled up and my brain just kind of yeah. went, you know, we didn't talk about we um do we have questions? I can't see the chat. Um, are there questions that we should be answering? Because let me check. Let me check real quick. I I uh, feel bad about that. Um, uh, one thing that I did want to mention is we kind of breezed over it earlier. You know, um, the the thing that I think keeps me loving the hobby so much is the ability to not only connect with people but also give back. So, um, you know, last year Andy and I partnered on creating this key set that is here on this keyboard now. Um, and he did an incredible, in, most all of the work, to be completely fair, um, and designed this lovely desk mat that we're looking at here, inspired by the 808, uh, the TRS-808 uh, Rhythm Composer. And we, and through that, got to donate $7,000 to a charity called the Children's Music Fund. Um, their website is the cmf.org. Um, if you are in California or you like children or like helping sick children, I highly recommend you go to them. Um, they actually do uh, music therapy with with children who have to be in hospitals for extended periods of time. So to kind of cut the monotony of their lives and maybe enrich them, they give lessons, they, they play music for them, they give concerts. Um, you know, they have a small budget of, of about $41,000 a year and they're extremely highly rated in terms of funds going to the actual uh, thing that they say they're gonna do. Um, so, you know, we, we likely will be doing another run of the 808 set so you can get a key set and donate at the same time. But if you just like to give money to good things or good people, you know, the community helped us do that, mm -hmm. but I also urge you to at least check them out, especially if you're in Southern California, that's where they do most of their operations. Um, that's that's really the main thing I wanted to talk about aside from keyboards today, so. Yeah, and I know we posted the guide too for people to be able to consult after yes. the fact, because I know yes. we just threw like an absolute, uh, a, a how, how, would, how would not everyone understand how to build a keyboard now? With, yeah, with like there is that, that was that was a lot for you guys. So yeah, um, check check that link out. Um, save it that way you have a good reference. Um, you can always reach out to me on all of my socials too. It should just be uh, Andy Doring on any platform um, that you that you want to hit. And I am always more than helpful to to Sherpa anyone through um, the complicated landmine field that is trying to build your first custom keyboard. I would I would like I would be remiss if I didn't let people who know Andy. Uh, aware into this piece of knowledge uh, but he is one of the most desired artisan makers in the community and even more so because he doesn't he, you know he's he's moved on from that now so um 
not only was he one of the first artisan makers I ever came in contact with, uh, but also one of the best. So I'm a lucky man. And um, if you know him in real life, you should please, please ask him to share that with you because golly geez, it's awesome. So you're, you're a gem. You're a you know, gem. Your face is a gem. A gem. Got him. Yeah. Didn't even see it coming. Nailed didn't, it. Didn't. <laughs> yeah, do you have? Do you, I don't have any of my artisans with me. Um, I didn't fly with my case this time. Do you uh, have I am any lazy you as hell, kind of but I do idea. have artisans in front of me. Yours, I don't have in front of me. But like, yeah, here's an example. Fine, yeah. Here's an example. So, speakers, in collaboration with 808, because obviously 808s come out of speakers. Um, some more. <laughs> let's see. Uh, just recently, I got into a friend, Q Caps. He makes these blanks. That are just giant question marks and i love that so much they're shaped like a keycap they're made of resin they've got designs on them um an incredible one that i only have one of is hello caps and he makes little kits and little cats little cats and then latrialum she makes these fun things that was a cafe collaboration you know we've got jam jams and space jams this is a seal in pajamas named jam jams how amazing yeah. is that? We've got Space Jams, the seal in pajamas in a space suit, because why not? Look at this little alpha keys. Look, artisans are a whole thing, okay? And that's a whole nother realm. If you appreciate art or you just like silly things in your keyboards, man, we've got a lot of options for you there. Yeah, if you want, if you want a rabbit hole, you won't recover from. Boy, boy, do I have a niche and a niche for you, like. We're we're very specific keyboards and keyboard layouts, not niche enough for you. Well, let me introduce you to artisans because oh boy, you can yeah. spend entire years worth of paychecks on those bad girls and boys, and you shan't recover from them. So enjoy that. Yeah, I guess uh, a, a real quick like artisans in thirty seconds, right? Is like people uh, sculpt people sculpt keycaps out of. Um, a, whatever medium they like, they create silicon molds and then they hand dye uh, resin um, with pigment and then they apply those to the molds under pressure to make sure that there's no bubbling and cracking. And those are like decorative uh, one off, normally one you uh, keys for your board that are still very much like very low supply, very high demand. People find, you know, just like Supreme or Coach or whatever whatever your whatever your thing Coach, is we like, gucci okay like, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know okay. whatever your flavor is but but like there might only be like seven of a certain colorway of one of these things made and people just, just they chase them and they post on you know reddit uh you know like mech market and in these discord channels where people are buying and selling and trading these boards to try and track down this stuff and and the you know the hunt and the search for all, most of most of keyboards really um, is is really like one of the biggest draws I would say people people get on that uh, that FOMO high and they just gotta have it you know people people literally trade entire collector level boards for single artisans I am not at all making that up. There's a lot of like overlap with like audio and stuff too. People will trade like really nice four or five thousand dollar pair of headphones for like a you know a, whatever board they're looking for, or like people trade a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different key sets or boards for like uh, Gaff or like yeah the Bongo Cats or you know whatever that is. Man, Bongo Cat, I am all up. I'm all about it. I love the Bongos, man. Okay, come on. Oh, key cap pullers definitely need to have one of those if you're in the hobby yes okay we're nearing completion ladies and gents all right where's that there it is I'm are, you a friend. are you a flipped space bar gal uh i am i am flipped space bar stepped caps uh silent black stem in the space bar switch kind of person still using the silent in there okay yes. okay i've specifically bought a batch of silent blacks just to harvest the stems and do that specific thing which i have done on this board for whoever winds up winning this Listen, um, this board is going to go to someone and they're going to love it okay <laughs> they're going to love it like your color is much better than mine i'm i'm very washed out but well, and funny, funny enough, um, it's actually more blue than it is in person. It is, it is very accurate to terminal. 
extremely green. GMK terminal or uh, the the terminal caps that they've ran. GMK, I believe, was the original colorway yes. that, that that did it. Yeah, they are very very accurate to that. Um, and this is what the board looks like lit up. Um, it has a range of colors that you oh, can. Oh, you can't use. you can't have a custom plastic keyboard without R's, G's, and B's. Yeah. Not only do they make it look cool, but they also make you a better typist and gamer. I get it. Uh, not least... a, a thing. A, a thing. A lot of people don't know. More color means better gamer. I get at least five extra WPMs when I turn the lights on. It's basically like turning the air conditioning on in the Corolla. You know it's, it's going turning... down. Yeah, yeah. You the second the second that you turn that AC off, you know you got that ten percent horsepower back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the uh, with the little bit of time we have left. Um, I believe that they put the giveaway link at the bottom of this stream. You guys can click that, check it out. It should be a form you could fill out. Um, and we'll go ahead and try and get some winners picked as we wrap up these bills. Um, and we'll put these in the mail. Uh, any, anywhere in the world, you're not geo-locked on this one. Um, while, I, while I got a minute, I, I want to thank Key, uh, Key Company again for sending us uh, Lang and I these amazing hoodies to wear. Um, I wore mine, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in my I'm dungeon at home. Outside so. of the strip, but... It's cool, uh, baby. So they sent us that. They sent us these kits to give away. Uh, these kits will also come with a black case variant that you'll have too. Um, I'm sending uh, all also along. You'll wind up getting um, extra parts for that case. Uh, you get at least I think a seven U stab, some extra switches, um, and then also you know their their standard TKC stickers know. and stuff. I don't know what they're gonna do in. with the seven U stab though, baby. Like like. Are yeah, they gonna, are they gonna are they gonna mod their PCB and their and their plate and all that? Like, look, y'all can have it. It's just it's you never know. It'll, it'll you know they'll find their preference first and they'll go from there. Uh, you know, oh uh, and th it also comes with these color matching cases. Honestly, this is a pretty, this was a this was a super slick kit. Like, this is probably taking over my recommendation for giving somebody uh, like a where a where to go for their first board over like maybe KBD fans, just because of how- I, I would also is. like to say that Novel Keys has really <laughs> killed it on this too. Oh, yeah, like, they have the, the NK65, right? They've been coming out with variants of? Yeah, yeah. they have very, very entry level friendly things. Um, oh, look I, at her. She all RGB. Yeah. Um, and and it would it would not be a keyboard build stream if we didn't do some typing sounds, okay? so. So let me just pull up a type thing and I will type for you so that you know what's what your, it sounds like. What's your level setting method? Are you uh are you a, I'm gonna click my fingers, I'm gonna use my mouse. Uh, I'm, gonna... I, I, I'm what I'm what's called a bad streamer that isn't good at what I do, so I don't level set at all. Just straight into the typing don't, test. I, no I uh, no don't, snaps, so. no no clicks, we're just going. Okay, so I actually have to select here. Uh, that's a keyboard. It, it types, it does things, um, and it makes sounds. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 yours for the freeze.com. And if you wind up getting this kit, you can find um, the all of the information about it on their website. Um, you can also find links to the key map so you can figure out how to change your R's, G's, and B's. Um, it's QMK um, supported, so you can redo the key map if you want to have it. QMK, but not the. Not the. Not not via supported. I don't think so. I could be yes. very wrong. Again, dumb. Don't trust me. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure if Mac Merlin gets on his porting <laughs> just, with ports just, streams yeah. and ports it, it's over. It's I'm over. Sure, I'm sure. Wait, where'd the case go? So, this is how we do it in the Jeff world. We put it in the case. It's built. Does it fit like I want it to? It does. But again, dumb. You guys, dumb. How, how do I actually get things in a case? I don't know. Here we go. We're just going to jam it all in there. It's it's all yours. It's all yours, friends. There's my weird 40%. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I hope that friends enjoy this a lot.
Yeah, you're washed out, sweetheart. That's okay though. I know. I, I'm I'm just rolling with the Logitech. I'm 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 mobile. I'm mobile right now. Listen, I got the Logitech on my face, but I also have like studio lights because I'm you know a pro streamer, you know, just the proest of pros, you know, like got my my flown cameras. You oh, know, I can shake my desk, and you know what doesn't happen? Cameras don't move. You know. Oh, oh no, we we did it live. We showed up and we built we built a little operations center. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Vegas, I was unaware that this was the stream where you were going to tell me that you were better than me. I love streaming with you. You're so much fun. <laughs> You're so much fun. I'm so happy that this got to happen. Thank you, yeah, thank man. you, thank you. Uh, all the extra parts I got to put in there. I got to put extra. Well, listen, hey, we don't we don't want to we don't want to run over time more than we have to, and we're also going to uh, make sure that we announce. The winner, um, we're going to leave that form open for a little while to give everyone an opportunity um, because this is probably going to be the only form in this hobby you're going to fill out where you feel like you had enough time to do it um, for, for trying to get something. So we, we really want you to milk this yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I do feel like with the Bongo Cats, I have enough time. However, like 12,000 entries, I never am going to win one of 10 caps. Like, you know, that's yeah cheers to winning i guess here's, yeah forms here's open some. for seven minutes good luck yeah so well all right yeah hey man thanks again for joining me thanks for th thanks for always for being down to do another wild project with me you always say yes anytime, every time i ask you that's anytime. why i keep asking um and and again you know like um I'm I, uh, me, me, Jeff. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. If you do like, if this did interest you even a little bit, uh, reach out the, the, the at Lang, like you can, I, I am extremely accessible. Ask questions, please, please. I'm not, don't, you don't have to come to my Twitch stream and sub. You don't have to join my discord. You can just ask questions. It's fine. Hit me on Instagram, hit me on discord, whatever, you know, you don't have to do any of that. So, um, no pressure. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> It's your house, Omar. Thanks for having us. Oh, no, no, thank, so thank you. Appreciate thank you. You're, I really appreciate you, got, it. you got like the DSLR, like you got mirrorless on your face. Like oh, it's all over. Oh man, all you're over. Like, you're like not messing around. Actually, you're gonna like this one's well. Shoot. Oh, oh, is oh my god. Hold on, hold. On. Uh, okay, so on the bottom, do it's you, the Star Wars one, right? Yeah, that's the GMK. Yeah, that's, the uh, that's the Star Wars one. That's Boba Fett, right? Yeah, DSA Boba Fett. Yeah. Yep, DSA Boba Fett, or not DSA? That's the GMK one. That's the GMK. Oh, one. I didn't know they did a GMK run. I've been out a minute. And then, yeah, this and is the GMK one. The one up top. Oh my god, what's the? Oh, uh, Red Riot. Nope. No. Uh, I can't remember the name, but yep. SA, a nice a, a, a that berserk? gentleman. Is that yep. SA Berserk? That's oh, it. Berserk. Damn it. There it is. Killing me. Killing down, me. Down but not out. Still got it. Still got it. Rick. Well, I'll take my L and I will leave. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having us. No problem.
Welcome everyone. I'm Barrett Darnell with the Red Team Village, and I'm here today with Ryan Dory and Matt Eidelberg from Optiv. Hey everybody. Uh, how's it going? Ryan and Matt, uh, thank you so much for being here today. And I want to uh, thank Optiv for being a sponsor for the Red Team Village CTF this year. Your support really helps uh, and, and it goes a long way at uh, allowing us to provide a big event both in person and virtually. Can you tell me a little bit more about Optiv? Yeah, absolutely. So to put it very simply, Optiv is a pure play cybersecurity partner. And what does that mean? Uh, we, we aim to do secure, all security all the time, right? We can help in ways of advisory, deployment, and even manage operations, right? So ultimately, our, our goal is very simply to uh, help organiza organizations realize a more effective uh, security program and posture. And uh, for, for both of you specifically, what, what do you do at Optiv? So I'm a senior director inside of threat management, which is a larger umbrella, but I specifically have the privilege of leading our attack and pen team. Um, so my focus is on the direction of success of that team. And I achieve this largely by enabling uh, the great folks around me, such as uh, Mr. Eidelberg here. And I'm a technical manager under uh, attack and pen. My primary role is leading the adversarial simulation services. This is our uh, branch that focuses primarily on red and purple team operations. My role in there is not only executing these types of engagements, but also focusing on helping to innovate the team and grow uh, more operators to perform these types of engagements. All right, and uh, and for the for that uh, attack and pen practice, uh, why do you like working there? Yeah, so for me, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's it's the close family atmosphere that we have on the team. Uh, and what I mean by that is I've been on the team for almost nine years now. I've been in Attack and Pen the entire time, and I'm not alone in that. There's several other individuals on the team that, that have been here for a similar amount of time, such, a, such as Matt himself. So what that yielded is a really good dynamic uh, of folks to work well together while we uh, simultaneously you know, pursue our passion of offensive security. And just to add on to that, I would say in a single word, the community. Uh, the team itself uh, honestly strives constantly to push the boundaries, to teach each other new things, whether or not it's a, you know, failures from previous engagements to help educate for future uh, kind of tests or even success stories. It's all about sharing and kind of bolstering each other through knowledge sharing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and a plug for that, that giving back to the community aspect, you know, I was on your GitHub the other day and uh, I was looking at the Scarecrow and I know I've got that on my list to do a deep dive on after after DEF CON. You know, love, love the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of big players in uh, information security share that research, share that tooling that they create. Yep. That's what we strive to do here. And for your team, um, you know, what types of people work there? What are their backgrounds? So it's a, it's a good variety of backgrounds, right? So we have folks uh, so from being a, a good part of us being veterans uh, to business-minded folks to engineering folks, et cetera, right? Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, there, there's the ultimate uh, commonality, right, of, of a shared objective of offensive and passion for offensive security testing. And then what we qualify that success really is, is helping leave our clients better than we found them at the end of the day. And of course, you know, folks have a very specific uh, or can have a specific subset of interest inside the team. Uh, that could be of IoT to embedded to wireless to low level window stuff to evasion, um, et cetera, right? So there's definitely some, some sub pockets for people to really go a mile deep on. Great. And with such a diverse group, uh, what makes somebody a success in AMP? So aside from uh, technical acumen, which obviously is held, you know, it's an important quality on this specific uh, role, right, uh, is the ability to show ownership and leadership and give back to the team. Um, really, you know, owning a specific service or an offering, uh, helping others, mentoring, et cetera, we hold that in incredibly high value. Um, and then, as we mentioned earlier, with regard to um, like Source Zero and Scarecrow, right, is the, the public thought leadership to help uh, the team immediately and then also give back to the community as well. Yep. And just to add on to that, I would say the eagerness to learn and improve your tradecraft. Um, honestly, the ones we see that excel the most are the ones that not only focus on themselves, but also make sure that they help their fellow teammates or coworkers, whether or not they're struggling with something or helping to help them also pursue and grow their talents. Those are the ones that I see often have the base success here. That's great. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a team sport uh, doing what we do. <laughs> yep.
for the for the red team village, one thing that we we uh, really love to do is is offer a lot of it, uh, environments for training. We do workshops. We 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 uh, participate in a lot of different cons. Um, and one thing you, you know we want to do is bring as many people into this community as possible. And so I'd I'd like to ask for both of you. Uh, you know, what is your advice for people who are interested in cybersecurity as a profession? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I'll speak to you know the path that I took to get here, and I think it, it holds true to the to the question, right? But I think it's very important or imperative for folks to have a a deep foundational understanding to, as to how uh, things work, right? So what I mean by that is how does Active Directory work? How does networking function? How can you manipulate these things to maybe work outside the bounds it was intended to, right? So that can apply to even development, web applications, etc. Um, oftentimes I get asked by people that are a bit younger, say in college or whatever, and they're like, hey, should I take this security class and become a pen tester? Well, I would really encourage folks to get a lot of those more foundational understandings to how things work before they move to the stage of trying to, you know, move to that adversarial emulation type part. Yep, and I would just add uh, to not just focus when you're learning on red team tactics. It's incredibly valuable in the current landscape to uh, focus on both blue and red team. Having that ability to speak both can really augment your skill set. And you know, this is very much a cat and mouse game-based industry. And just knowing both sides, their playbooks, can really help you understand the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. So when you're coming up against, say, a red team or a blue team, you know what they are great at and what their weaknesses are to really help plan out those attacks or even your knowledge set to improve on. Those, that is phenomenal advice. Uh, this industry is is a challenge because there's so much breadth and depth that you can take, uh, not to mention that it's evolving every single day. So it's impossible to keep up. So you've, you've got to have that thirst for knowledge. And uh, and without that foundation, it, it is quite difficult. I mean, you might throw that exploit and get that, get that shell back, but then the question is, what do you do next, right? And so, uh, great advice. I want to thank both of you for being here today. Uh, thank you again for the sponsorship. Looking forward to uh, to meeting you in person and uh, and also with uh, with DefCon right around the corner. You know, uh, looking to to engage with old friends and 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 make some new ones. So so thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some folks out at DefCon. Yep. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot to plug. Uh, Optiv is actually throwing a party at DefCon, right? And you've got a uh, you've got an invitation out there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, come check out some of the Source Zero folks. Uh, I believe it's Friday night and the 26th floor, if I remember right. So yeah, come by and say hi. Excellent. Looking forward to that. Knock, knock, who's there, this guy? What's up, red teamers? What's up, DEF CON? It's your favorite fake brilliant billionaire investor. My little birdies, cheap, 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 cheap. I like cheap things. That's why I'm rich. They let me know. That lunar fire is under fire, but that is a Tres Comas company. And that's got so much smart shit in it. And so it's unhackable. Or is it? No, it isn't. Not even you boy and girl geniuses can do it. You would have to be the human equivalents of cars with doors that open like this or like this. Are you? Can you? Will you? Don't.
Right, welcome back, everybody. Today is almost a wrap, and um, first things first, I'm sharing the leaderboard of the finals. And guess what? AI generator is in the first place, and then followed by EP EPT, and then by Son of Anton. But not by much, actually. The second place is is hold, held by three, three teams in there. So it's pretty rough, pretty rough competition that we have right now. So uh, Andy, I have some winners i think here uh, for the keyboards so if, if you don't mind actually i'm sharing the screen here and announcing the winners awesome yeah uh so it looks like congrats to uh psycho 
1843 um, or Psycho Slave. And also, grats to uh, Marshall Hacks for being the winners of those terminal boards. We will definitely uh, get those out to you guys uh, as soon as we can. Uh, grats again. And thanks for watching. Thanks for being here with us today. And thank you to the keyboard company for uh, sponsoring the event as well. And th thanks, uh, thanks again. Now, do you think, uh, or Daniel, uh, can you highlight somewhat some of the, I guess, uh, the main questions and the activities in, in the Discord channel, and also um, the things that are upcoming for tomorrow? Um, honestly, everything in Discord has been pretty quiet. We've had some questions from the the CTF participants and. Uh, you know, our, our team has been doing a really good job addressing them as they've come up. Everyone seems to be cooperating with each other and not abusing machines too bad and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see everything going as smoothly as it is. I know these things are always kind of a crapshoot. You can't ever, uh, you can't ever anticipate the, the types of attacks everyone's going to launch. So. Um, everything seems to be running really smoothly, though. Um, coming up tomorrow, uh, we're going to have our uh, our pre-show at 9:45. Uh, these are all uh, PDT times. Um, we'll begin our finals at 10 a.m. We've got a guest interview coming up at 11. Omar, do you know who that guest is? Do we know yet? It's a surprise. It's a surprise guest. Okay. Uh, and then at noon, we're going to announce our winners for the CTF. So we only got a couple more hours tomorrow to work on it. Um, and then we've got, I'm guessing, another surprise guest coming up at one. We don't know there either. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll close out our contest tomorrow at two, and we'll have our closing stream at three. And we're going to announce a few uh, winners of the OSCP courses of today. So we had three today. We're collecting all the, the winners tonight, and then we're going to announce the first thing in the morning. And then we're going to have more giveaways uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we've got tons. Yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, we probably have to pick up the pace because we have a lot. <laughs> we, <go away. laughs> we have Stay with much. us tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. And then um, one thing to highlight, of course, you know, stay tuned for the DEF CON closing ceremonies, which is actually after our closing ceremonies as well. So, so with that, thank you again. Thank you for the staff. Thank you to the volunteers, everybody on staff, on site. You have been instrumental. Andy, Disync, you know, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yep, see you. Cool.